Dr. Sushil is an associate professor of neuroscience at the School of Life Sciences, JNU. He has also worked at the University of Pennsylvania, where he worked as a research associate. He is the recipient of numerous admirable awards, such as the Professor Baldev Singh Oration Award, Scopus Young Scientist Award, and the Faculty Career Development Award, among others. In his commendable vocation, he has written and published 27 research papers and six book chapters. With great enthusiasm, let us all welcome Dr. Sushil Kumar Cha. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ashutosh. Uh, let me share my uh... okay so good morning and thank you so much asmita and uh, other organizers for giving me a chance to present my work over here. And uh, Ashutosh, thank you so much for introducing me and you have digged out so much information. Uh, you did a, like, a good job. <laughs> uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how does sleep help in making memory? And that is what my research area, uh, area is. I just try to understand uh, why nature has evolved sleep and what are the uh, functions that it uh, provides and what it does to our brain and body. So uh, this is uh, a kind of work that we do. And here, uh, what is a, is a total work that is done over here in India and also some work that I did abroad. So that makes me to make a complete a story uh, to help uh, to dig out how sleep helps in making memories. So uh, how do we study? Uh, we don't study the sleep pattern in humans, rather we are using animal model to uh, answer these questions. So in animal model or even the human, uh, how we characterize sleep uh, by recording brain waves uh, from uh, e, that is EEG and EMG. So uh, during wakefulness, uh, brain waves, that is, uh, you can see here, it is high frequency waves and low amplitude and a lot of muscle activity. So this is the characterized, uh, this phase we characterize as wakefulness. And during sleep, then what happens, brain waves changes their pattern and it becomes high amplitude, low frequency waves and muscle activity goes down. So this is, we call it as non-REM sleep because uh, REM means that it stands for rapid eye movement and EOG I'm not showing here over here. So rapid eye movement sleep was discovered in 1953 where uh, it has been found that during sleep eyes are moving a lot but along with that, then there's a one characteristic feature that has also been observed that is muscle becomes atonic. Muscle is like posterior muscles, they don't have any activity. And it's a straight line that was the activity you can see over here. And surprisingly, it was found that EEG looks like very similar to wake condition. So EEG is very similar to wake condition. A lot of eye movement and muscle atonia that was uh, characterized. So because of eye movement, this stage was called as rapid eye movement sleep and short REM sleep. And opposite to that, non-REM sleep where eye activity has not been uh, observed uh, that frequently. So this is called non-rapid eye movement sleep. So basically if you count, uh, measure total sleep, 80% uh, we spend time in non-REM sleep and 20% on an average we are spent in REM sleep every night. So this is how uh, sleep is studied in the lab. And uh, function, <clears throat> what we know, uh, any, any, any function you name it, sleep has a role like first energy conservation, immune function, brain development, 
uh, brain detoxification, body de uh, detoxification, all these you can name it that sleep uh, helps in uh, maintaining our uh, body and brain in a, in a balanced state. So my lab is working here on the three aspects, brain development, learning and memory, and synaptic plasticity. Today, I'm going to talk about learning and memory. We use animal model and uh, learning paradigm that uh, uh, we are using. The, we train animal that is called associative memory or conditioned memory. In conditioned memory, what uh, is done, that is a Pavlovian con conditioned memory, it is also called. So what we do, uh, we give electrical shock to the animal, means briefly for a microsecond, um, for milli uh, micro sorry, millisecond and, and a microvolt in a particular ambient. And next day, we bring the animal in the same ambient and see how animal is behaving because Shock is a noxious stimulus and animal shows fearful response that is called fear conditioning. So in the absence of any shock, only the ambient uh, animal gets scared and that is what the learning paradigm. So in normal day-to-day -day life, uh, what we call as dood ka jala chhajbi phuk phuk ke pita hai. That is what the conditioning means. So you can see in this video, uh, this where the animal is kept in this chamber and we give mild electrical shock in microvolt range for only a few seconds. And uh, this animal is, you can see here, animal is moving and when shock will be given, animal will jump a little bit. And look at the activity, animal is so active, moving around. And when and the, that, that was the shock, animal uh, just jumped. Next day, when we bring animal in the same condition, uh, I can stop this video. And when the next day, when we bring uh, the same condition, uh, same chamber, but we don't give any shock and we'll see how animal is scared. You can, now we can compare uh, these two. So one animal is showing activity and another animal is so scared, is not moving. And computer registered all these uh, activity uh, that is called freezing because when we are scared, we, we show freezing response. So after this, what we do, we divide the animal into different groups. So here it is non-sleep deprived, then sleep deprived, and sleep deprivation the way we do for six hours just after training. Animal is uh, allowed to uh, be with, uh, with a chamber and then uh, we keep them uh, in a rotating uh, drum that keeps on rotating for a few um, minutes, then it is stopped. So, experimented uh, keep them awake for six hours and after that we bring the animal back to the colony and then allowed them to take rest for it rest 18 hours so this is what the sleep deprivation method is being used so you can say that is a stress control uh, that may be stressful so we have a stress control group as well now you can see here uh, this non-sleep deprived and a stress control animal showed good amount of freezing when we tested 24 hours after training, but the sleep deprived animal, the freezing response was less. So sleep deprived animal did not learn properly that environment was scary. And then we studied their sleep pattern. What we found that non REM sleep that I showed, uh, after training, if animal was not sleep deprived, the normally behaving animal, after training, when we recorded sleep, we found at a particular hour, that is second to fourth hour of after training, animal spent more time in non-REM non sleep uh, in this uh, condition. So that shows that after learning, the learned group had more sleep 
non-REM sleep amount at a particular window compared to the animal who did not learn. That is what baseline it shows here. Another paradigm that we use that is called appetitive conditioning. Here, instead of giving electrical shock, what we do, we offer fruit juice to the animal. And there is a sequential way that we offer that fruit, uh, fruit juice. So animal will be in the chamber and the fruit juice is uh, outside and the liver will take this fruit juice from the tank and will be delivered through this window. Uh, sorry will be delivered through this window. And uh, this is in a sequential manner. There are four phases. This, you can see a light. The light will be on. That time, there will be no fruit juice. Then the light will be off. Then no fruit juice. Third will be here, there's a light and the fruit juice delivery at the same time. That is the third phase. And fourth phase, then the, when the fruit juice will be removed. You can see in this video how animals behave. So the first phase is start because this light is on. So this is the fruit juice came up after light off. And animal is trying to get that fruit juice. And in, in a no time, they, it, this is a microliter, 100 microliter fruit juice, so it licks, animal licks it very quickly. This is a fourth phase. And you can see the animal is so attentive that always try to get fruit juice on that window, so remain in that area. So once more, you can see this video, the second phase is started, that is phase one, second cycle, phase one, light is on, no fruit juice. And animal will be moving around in that area. That is the second phase of cycle two. Animal is still alert. That this is a phase three when the fruit, fruit juice appeared. And then liver will be down. That will be fourth phase. So this is how we train animal. One is fear conditioning and other appetitive conditioning. The data I will be showing here. So this is the data of appetitive conditioning. Here we found uh, in fear conditioned animal, we found that non-REM sleep increased in a particular time point, at a particular time point. Here in this uh, appetitive conditioning, what we found instead of non-REM sleep, you can see here non-REM sleep at all days are similar. But REM sleep significantly increased after training and after testing. So here REM sleep amount increased, non-REM did not change. So this is what it suggests, depending on the training task, the training uh, pattern, uh, REM sleep and non-REM sleep, the amount uh, may vary and both are playing important role in fear conditioning. So now we are asking question, if sleep is required, what sleep does how sleep provides the machinery of fear condition um, memory consolidation and how it facilitates so we have worked out at four different stages one is the as a molecular stage where we have looked at the possible candidate gene if their expression is enhanced during sleep or sleep deprivation alters the expression of these possible candidate gene associated with memory consolidation Second, if at the epigenetic level, if sleep provides certain uh, facilitatory role for memory consolidation. Third is neurogenesis, that is called adult neurogenesis. So we all know that in our brain, a uh, number of neurons are fixed. If neurons are dead, dead, it cannot be regenerated. But there are certain areas in the brain, for example, dorsal hippocampus, that area is called dented gyrus, and uh, subventricular zone, where there are certain stem cells that give rise to new neurons. And these new neurons are also playing, it has been found that, that in response to learning or memory, these neurons are also playing important roles. So we have worked out whether sleep helps in uh, this neurogenesis, 
That's the third mechanism we worked out. And the fourth one is the brain oscillatory wave. So I will explain all these four uh, factors one by one and their role in um, sleep dependent memory consolidation. So what one can make out how sleep helps in memory consolidation. So the first thing that we worked out is this four candidate gene. Those are associated with the memory consolidation of fearful memory. These are forming two genes, GSK3 genes, NCDN, and Shang3. So you can see that immediately after learning these three genes, especially FM2, GSK3, and Shang3, their expression level increased during first hour after learning. And Shang3 also the third hour, this is uh, the expression level and when we use psi rna and we knock down the expression of these genes after training so animals showed very less freezing response so these are uh, psi rna uh, we used and when we use the control animal these two you can see this control animal is showing a good amount of freezing learning response but when these four candidate genes were uh, knocked down with psi rna the animal showed learning deficit. So that shows these candidate genes are associated with learning response. And when we found that what happens if animals were not allowed to sleep for six hours after training, so we found that sleep deprivation is altering the expression of GSK3, NCDN, and Shang3, they are Shang3 genes. So their expression level significantly down. FM2 was also, but it was not significant. So the, here it suggests that if you train the animal, these candidate genes are uh, expression level increases. And uh, when you knock down the expression level of these genes using psi RNA, the animal shows learning deficit. And when you sleep deprive them after training, animal uh, in animal hippocampus area, the expression level of these genes are significantly down, that suggests that sleep deprivation uh, or sleep during sleep, this expression level is going up and that is how they may, uh, sleep may be helping to learn them better. The second uh, question that I asked about uh, if, if sleep plays any role at the epigenetic level, you all must be knowing that at the epigenetic level, there are two mechanisms histone stylase and uh, stylation and histone destylation are, are, are the machinery. Those are involved with the coiling and uncoiling of DNA uh, from the histone protein. So when the style groups are attached and you, uh, DNAs are more wrapped around the histone protein, when these style uh, groups are removed by destylase enzyme, then you see this uh, G, uh, DNA will be uh, uncoiled from the histone and gene expression is taking place. So we worked out if we, what happens to, uh, if we uh, block the expression of this histone deacetylase by enzyme, the better by Saha, that is common name is Virnosistat. So if we block this uh, expression of, uh, sorry, the activity of histone deacetylase, so the expression level, uh, gene expression will be altered. So what happens? to the learning paradigm. So the first thing that we, we determine, uh, when we give training to the animal, what is the level of acetyl, this H4K12 protein? So for general uh, audience, I'll just try to go back and show how these are the different histone proteins are uh, involved and that forms nucleosome uh, bead and around that the DNA is coiled. So we are talking about histone 4 protein here and histone 4 K12, uh, their expression level. So this is the normal situation expression level of style uh, H4 K12 protein. And when animal is trained, the expression level goes up after training uh, in the non-sleep deprived animal. And what happened in sleep deprived animal, you can see the expression level is down is not in the stress control animal. So when we injected uh, Saha, the expression level, obviously it will go up. And when Saha was given in, in a sleep deprived animal, 
the expression level still remain very high. So, and uh, the sleep deprived animal, when the saha was injected into the hippocampus, where the expression of this uh, SLK4 is very high, so then you can see here, uh, this, um, the animal shows a very good amount of learning. So that suggests that sleep is playing important role in the expression of this style uh, epigenetic level, but if, and increases and helps in the gene regulation. Third question that uh, uh, I, I, I asked uh, about whether sleep helps in uh, inducing more number of neurons in the area those are involved in learning process, especially hippocampus. And the paradigm that you use, again, is a hippocampal dependent task uh, in the brain. So you can see under normal condition, these dots are nothing but it's a BRDU positive cells. And what BRDU is, BRDU is in a, um, that it goes when the DNA is replicating. So it goes and binds uh, with its nitrogen base. So uracil is repro uh, replaced by BRDU and you can use antibody against BRDU. So wherever you dot, you see, these are the newly uh, replicated uh, DNA in the new neuron. So you can see the normal animal, what is the number of BRD positive cells? And with a trained animal, this number of dots you can see uh, that has significantly increased. But in sleep deprived animal, it is almost close to the baseline condition. So now you can see this is all DCX positive cells, means newly formed neurons. In trained animal, you can see how much uh, new neurons have generate, was generated. But in sleep deprived condition, uh, these neurons are not uh, generated to that level. So it shows that sleep plays an important role uh, in adult neurogenesis. And these are certain, um, okay. So last fourth question that uh, we asked, uh, what about uh, um, this uh, activity of these neurons? Uh, those are associated with uh, um, memory consolidation. What has been found that when we learn, the information goes into the neuron and during memory consolidation that happens after learning. So these neurons are reactivated without the stimulus. That has been found and that happens mostly during sleep period. Why, that is we are asking question, why sleep these neurons are reactivated when there is no stimulus? So what happens to the neuronal activity first? So here I'm showing R is uh, the marker that shows the neuronal activity. So you can see here, this R level has gone up in the dorsal hippocampus after training. And that is in the, the, uh, the task that was associated with dorsal hippocampus. And in the ventral hippocampus, that was task associated with the ventral hippocampus. So it's a very, very area specific expression level of R. And R shows that neuronal activity in that area after training. It was first shown, uh, this, the theory was proposed that is called uh, neuronal. Uh, Synaptic re-entry reinforcement hypothesis. What happens is when we learn this uh, neuronal activity is going up because of the synaptic upscaling due to NMDA receptors. And then it happens again and again, like several times, repeated reactivation, first, second, third. But it has not been shown when it happens. And it was first proposed by uh, this Simizu uh, group in Princeton University, New Jersey. And then by uh, Declam uh, group in Germany, it shows that 
probably it happens reactivation during wakefulness uh, because this is required. And later on, McGon group in the USA, he, he showed that it happens mostly during sleep phase. So replay of neuronal firing that happens in the hippocampus during sleep phase. When I was working in UPenn, this the first time we showed that remodeling neurons means when the neurons are upscaled, uh, how they are behaving during non-REM sleep, REM sleep, and wakefulness. So I will not explain in mechan uh, in detail because that requires more time. So you can see here, this is the phase when this synaptic upscaling was not induced, and this is the phase when the synaptic upscaling was induced. Now you can see that these lines are nothing but a neuronal activity. So you can see this, these two neuronal uh, activity, how it has increased during non-REM sleep and REM sleep, before and after. Now you can see the number of all these lines are so high. So it shows that when synaptic risk upscaling is induced, the activity of the neurons goes up, uh, go up during uh, non-REM sleep and REM sleep. Wakefulness, there is not much change. But it, it was still a mystery how these neurons uh, will be activated so much in the absence of real stimulus because we are sleeping. So we have learned when we are awake, now this information has gone into the brain, but during sleep, these neurons will be activated to the level when they were, act, the way they were active during activation. So that was the mystery. So slowly, slowly we are coming up to get this answer, what happens, a brain waves that is all over from the surface as well as to the subcortical area. So here what we are talking about, we are talking about the brain waves uh, at the cortical level. Here, this is at the cortical level and this is at the subcortical means at the, in the amygdala where the neuron or uh, the memory consolidation mechanism is taking place for the amygdala dependent learning. So what we found after learning, what you see, this is a basal level in non-trained animals, the activity is. And in the trained animal, during non-REM sleep and REM sleep, this particular electrical waves, that is, here is a delta wave, here it is a, mm, sigma wave, and this oscillatory waves, are very, very high, significantly high compared to the non-trained animal during non-REM sleep as well as REM sleep. But at the amygdala level, what we found, this spind spindling mechanism was very, very high. And also what happens during REM sleep, some of the, I call it the stray waves, because it is generated in the in the another one part of the brain and that it travels it jumps from one part of the brain to the another part and their activity is also increased during REM sleep and here we have found that at a particular network the electrical wave activity is very very high and these electrical waves has a potential to induce neuronal activity because they help in the neuronal crosstalk between a significant or between a relevant area of their circuitry. So it, these waves are helping them to understand the learning procedure, memory consolidation procedure, and, and it helps in uh, inducing the neuronal activity. So that has been shown. So this is just to conclude that memory consolidation requires sleep. So when we sleep, whatever we learn during wakefulness or during, when we are alert, during sleep, those learning paradigms are consolidated. If we don't sleep, memory consolidation is impaired. So we will not be that efficient in learning. And how sleep helps them? Level, 
epigenetic level, at the gene expression level, even uh, by inducing more number of neurons. Even if you read more, if you have a reading, like a more reading habit, reading habit also induces adult neurogenesis in the brain. So more number of neurons will be there. And the reactivation replays theory that supports how because of the increased brain oscillatory rate. And this is how sleep helps in memory consolidation possibly. So thank you so much. Uh, these are my team members. Uh, they are working in my lab. And uh, we are trying to understand the mystery of brain. So thank you so much. If you have any question, any doubt, uh, definitely uh, I will be happy to answer that. Thank you, sir, sir, for sharing your knowledge. We have a couple of questions. So first yeah. question is, how does the neurons help in development and storage of memories? Uh, do we need this uh, slide? Uh, should I stop that sharing? Sir, it's up to you. OK, so uh, sorry, uh, can you, uh, can you uh, repeat your question? Sorry. Yes, sir. Sir, how does the neurons help in development and storage of memories? How does? How does the neurons help in development and storage of memories? Okay, oh, okay. This has been like has been shown uh, by several uh, other groups. Uh, there are different mechanisms associated. What happens when we learn uh, that is called um, the neurons? Those are fired together, wired together. That is called Hebbian hypothesis means when we are learning the two groups of neurons, because learning is not at the one place. So the new neurons for different different stimuli, they will be active. And the neurons where this is stored, remote, uh, information remains stored uh, in the form of uh, some protein that we do not know. Also, it's some form of synaptic uh, restructuring, more number of synapse, more synaptic connection will be formed between the two neurons. So those are the mechanism that is called synaptic and neuronal plasticity. So that is the underlying mechanism for memory consolidation. So when we learn that changes are taking place. And normally these are so dynamic for a general audience, we say we never use same brain twice because every time you are learning your, your dynamics, neural dynamics is Change. Thank you, sir. So the next question is, how are some memories long lived and some memories transient? Oh, very good. Very good. So based on this kind of quality of memory, uh, memory has been divided into two halves, short term memory and long term memory. So short term memory doesn't require the machinery that I showed. Like they don't require expression of gene. They don't require new protein synthesis. That has been shown. So short-term memory is at the uh, like the second messenger signaling system. So some kinases will be uh, upregulated, and then transiently you can that helps in uh, keeping those memory alive. But then the signal goes down, your memory fades off. So the next question is, how does neurons act in old age, which causes dementia and wakefulness? Oh, very nice. Uh, what happens is old age, uh, not only wakefulness, either of the two could be true. Some uh, geriatric subject uh, may be sleeping a lot. Some geriatric is sleeping less or some may not. That, so that depends on this uh, sleep circuitry. If the sleep circuitry is uh, highly activated, they will be sleeping a lot. Because that, that has been seen. But mostly what they like uh, old people, they, they sleep less. And that's a hell of a, the different uh, mechanism because it is a biologically regulated mechanism as well. And normally healthy geriatric subjects, you can say, they sleep less compared to adult and the young one. So that is how the sleep pattern goes down. But pathological situation, insomnia and hypersomnia can happen to the geriatric subject. Pathology, Alzheimer's, 
So what happened, this uh, dorsal hippocampus where I showed all these mechanistic, uh, that is underlying memory consolidation. So there are some protein, amyloid beta protein, uh, they are formed and the neurons are dead. So once those neurons are dead, so the memory, whatever this remains stored is, is, is gone and that is causing dementia. Okay, thank you, sir. So the next question is, why does things like deja vu happens? What, what, what can you say again? Sir, why does things like deja vu happens? Can you explain that a little bit? Deja sir, deja vu basically, uh, sometimes in the moment, we, we realize that we have lived this moment previously. So mm -hmm. it seems like that things are repeating and uh, things like that happens in deja vu. Okay. And anything else? Uh, sir, I don't so know. you have to be specific because if you give a terminology where there are a lot of symptoms associated, not one, there's a boo where you cannot say like one thing only. Yes, sir. One thing is like you have not experienced something in your life, but something you are experiencing that is not in reality. Yes, sir. Right? So those are, I do not know, there are certain mystery, mystery is still associated. Like I will say one example uh, that is called hypnagogic hallucination. Means you you hallucinate in such a way that never happens in your life. How how like daydreaming? You are there in a, in a room and you are feeling that you are. So these are the some kind of things. Uh, I will not go because it is difficult to explain what is happening. We know a little bit, but at this moment, it's very difficult to explain because one factor is not associated with that. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the next question is, how do we study the effects of sleep deprivation in humans? Oh, how do we study effects of sleep deprivation in humans? Mm -hmm. So uh, people, what people are trying to do um, here also, uh, I know two, three groups, they are uh, working on that. But mostly in the United States, they are doing, so they ask subject to volunteer and they ask them to come into the laboratory and they ask, uh, they provide everything to them, uh, to the subject, like coffee, reading material, TV show and everything. And then voluntarily they will come and they will talk but they will not allow you to sleep so that is how it's a nicer way of doing sleep deprivation but you know but how saddam hussein was tortured by american army no sir that is also through sleep deprivation okay so whatever like saddam hussein uh, had information army did not allow him to sleep for several days and then ultimately he, he broke. He, he said everything, whatever he, he knew. So okay. sleep deprivation is a method also uh, because your body cannot sustain long-term sleep deprivation. You need to sleep. So if you don't sleep for three, four days, five days, your mental status is so disturbed, you cannot afford to do that. Okay, sir. So I guess this is what happens to us in exams. <laughs> <In the exam. laughs> yes, sir. We, we pull all nighters and we don't know the answers the next day. No, no, no. See, during exam, what happens uh, this is a, like a self made condition of sleep deprivation. And uh, also, uh, this is like a, a stress is also coming into the picture and doesn't allow you to sleep that way. But at the same time, you know, if you don't sleep, whatever you are learning, whatever you're doing for the exam, it cannot be done in a better way unless you sleep properly. Okay. I did not show the data. What happens, uh, sometimes uh, I, uh, the audience or the student audience, what we do, what I show that data, like whatever, like if you, if you learn during daytime and during nighttime, whether this learning pattern is different, and we have clearly found that yes, it is different. For humans, like animal, what happens? Animals remain awake uh, during night, rats. 
so they learn better during night okay. compared to daytime and human subject learns better during daytime than night time and examination period we do the some uh, totally other another way that you yes, prepare you do your preparation during night and during daytime you are sleeping so it is against nature okay sir so we'll keep that in mind the the next time we give our exams okay uh, i hope uh, if you understood the mechanism see what happens even this gene regulation it is not like a static some of this some of the receptors their concentration uh, the level is changing during day and night so same neuron may be very very efficient during day time compared to night time that has been shown okay so this is yeah. a if the neuron is not supporting your system that is how the deficiency is okay so this is Stop. actually very important study to be honest right keep it in mind uh, th the next time we'll be preparing for exams okay i will be happy to see that if you have changed your mind and and live with nature okay sir sir the next question is uh, mm -hmm. does sleep affect memory of adults and children similarly Mm, no i will say adult because see what happens children uh, system neural system is resilient little bit because they are so dynamic adult what we talk about because uh, this kind of concrete study has not been done so based on the uh, property of the neuron i will say like adult are much more vulnerable than the child the children Okay. But children, there is a lot of dynamism is there. So synaptic uh, mechanism is much more dynamic. So what happens in one hour in adult brain that will happen in ten minutes in child. Okay. So adults are much more vulnerable than child, and that is how sleep deprivation effect is much more apparent after forty. Like you say, like students are uh, studying in night, and then still they are performing. Yes, sir. But the but the habit, if you are nocturnal in habit, look at the physiological consequences after forty. Hypertension, diabetes, all these pathological situation appears after forty. <laughs> so young one is resilient, but adult is not. Okay, sir. So Shil, uh, I just had a question in that regard, uh, somewhat in that regard. That is, uh, like you had shown that uh, uh, there are more uh, uh, new neurons that are being formed in case of, uh, you know, uh, in when you don't have sleep deprivation as opposed to sleep depri deprivation conditions. But um, uh, in uh, when a person ages, also you don't have that many uh, new neurons that are forming, right? So uh, the effect would be different in uh, different. different age groups yeah see this is the same thing as it uh, what happens the number of uh, stem cells they are big and the machinery is consuming it so it all depends uh, how fastly you are consuming it but the thing is when we are learning and continuously we are learning so this space is to remain maintained even in old age if someone has a reading habit and reading and learning properly you can see the brain faculty how it is efficient compared to the person who is not using their brain for example the retired person if he feels that i am retired and see how fast he develops all these kind of problem mm -hmm. and then their ability to learn but there are certain individuals you can see they are so good in learning even lot of doctors they they do surgery at the age of 70 or something like that but several doctors they don't no. so it is simple mechanism use and disuse okay. so more you use more efficient the system would be okay so the uh, number of new neurons that are being formed is also going to be different then in those Definitely, yeah. the rate may be different Mm -hmm. rate may differ but the old age if you compare old age versus old age the person who is learning a lot and person who is not reading a lot so their also number of neurons are different okay but compared to young that will be significantly less mm -hmm. okay thank you young age this neurogenesis is more dynamic yeah. compared to the old age thank you mm -hmm.
Okay, sir, this is the last question from the audience. So, mm -hmm. if we entrain the impaired oscillations by using binaural beats, can we still consolidate the memory? No, it is getting impaired. Okay. If if the oscillatory wave, if you do not allow oscillatory, that is how it has been proven. If you do not allow these oscillatory waves to take place, then memory is impaired. And that then further it has been dissected out that these waves are important in activating the neural circuitry reactivation that is happening during sleep. Okay. That be all, sir, in question and answers. Thank you, sir, for a very informative session on how sleep affects our memory. And uh, thank you for telling us that we should study on a day before the exam and not the night. Uh, Thank you, sir, for sharing your knowledge. We'll be starting in a couple of minutes with our next lecture by Dr. Tulika Prasad. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much.